Hi, it's Teacher Neil again, and today we will be learning about jobs. So, in your IELTS exam, people will often ask you, what is your job? Or, what kind of job do you have? Or, what do you do for a living? Now, if that is going to be on your IELTS exam, you can take a look at this useful vocabulary and sentences that can help you to express yourself when answering these questions. Now, let's take a look. We have got three different sections. Has a job, don't have a job, and self-employed. And we will go through them step by step, one by one, to help you understand and be able to express yourself fully when answering these kinds of questions. Now, let's take a look. First, we have has a job. So, if somebody asks you, do you have a job? You can say, well, yes, I work in the field. Work in the something plus field. So you can say, I work in the mining field, or I work in the sports field, or I work in the diamond field. So you will have to say your job title where the plus is, and the field is the area of work, or the type or the kind of work that you are involved with. Moving on, work in plus place and department. If you want to be specific, you can use this, the place and the department, if you have a famous company that you're working for or something people know. Like you can say, oh, I work in the police department or I work in the bank. Or, I work in the stadium, in the sports stadium. That's one way to describe it. Also, work for plus company. If you are working for a famous company like, for example, Apple or Microsoft, you can say, I work for Apple. I work for Microsoft. I work for De Beers. So we don't always have to say company if your company has a famous name, you can just use the name of your company and people will understand. Work as plus job position. So if you want to be specific, you can say what is your position at your company. For example, we can have CFO or manager. So if somebody asks you, where do you work? You can say, well, I work in Apple and I work as the manager in a store. Or you can say, well, I work for the beers and I am the chief CFO over here at that company. Looking over, do the for a living. So you can say, I do trade for a living or I do insurance for a living. This again is your field. So sometimes when you want to explain yourself, you can just use the field. I do engineering for a living. I do IT. Let's just write here, do IT for a living. And then people will quickly understand what you do. Earn a wage by something. So, if you do not work for a specific company or you have a skill-based job, you can use this sentence. I earn a wage by fixing things or I earn a wage by plumbing. Plumbing, if you don't know, plumbing means fixing a toilet or fixing things with water pipes. So you can say, because plumbing doesn't have a certain company or you don't want to say which company you are, you can say, I earn a wage by plumbing or I earn a wage by doing this or doing that. Land a job means you got a job. And usually this sentence we will use in a story. For example, you can say, 
I was working in a restaurant and then I met the owner of another company and he liked me so much that I landed a job at his company. Or you can say, I had many interviews and at the end they liked me so much I landed the job. So land in this sense means got. Also, one more way to describe your job is you can say, I have a nine to five job, which just means you have a regular job with regular times and regular hours. So you can say, I work from nine o'clock to five o'clock. Uh, you know, I just have a nine to five job. I work at McDonald's and I work as the manager of one branch. What do you do for a living? Oh, you know, I, uh, I do plumbing for a living. I earn a wage by fixing some toilets. That's what I do. Moving on. If you don't have a job, if you don't have a job yet, or maybe you're a student, you can use these words to express your current situation. Let's take a look. Unemployed which means the same as jobless, which means no job. Sometimes you get fired from a job and you are unemployed. Or you can also say, currently I'm in between jobs, which means that you are finishing at one company or one place and you are now in the time where you are going to be moving to a new job. So you can say, when somebody asks you, do you have a job? You can say, ah, at the moment I am unemployed, but I recently quit my previous job and now I'm in between jobs. I have a position starting in September at a new company. Also, we have job hunting, which hunting in this sense means search or looking. So you can say, ah, I'm jobless at the moment and I'm actually job hunting or I'm actually hunting for a job at the moment. So if you know of any place looking for a skilled worker, please help me out because currently I'm in between jobs. Just remember, when you are using between jobs, the proper way to segue into that is in. Don't make the mistake of saying on. It is in between jobs. So if somebody asks you, what is your job at the moment? You say, currently I am in between jobs. I just now moving on to one of the more exciting kinds of jobs. We have self-employed. Remember, employ means that somebody is giving you work or giving you a salary. So if you are self-employed, that means you give yourself work, which means you are your own boss or you give yourself work. Now, when you are self-employed, you can use these words to describe to what level you are self-employed. If somebody asks you, do you have a job at the moment? Are you currently employed? You can say, well, I'm self-employed and currently I am a freelancer. Now a freelancer means that other companies will hire you to do jobs on occasion which means you don't work at one company, you are a freelancer or a free agent and you can choose which place you want to work at and you can discuss a fee for your services. So you can say, I do freelance work at a few different companies. A freelancer can be something like a photographer or a writer something which doesn't make you have to sit in one place all the time. So you can say, you know, I'm a photographer, so I do a lot of freelance work and I'm employed by many different companies, but 
I choose my own time. Moving on. Self-employed, as we know, means you are your own boss. I don't like to work for a boss. I prefer to be self-employed. Telecommute means that you are working from home using either your telephone or the internet to do your business. So you can say, I am self-employed and I run my company from my home. I mostly telecommute to talk to my clients using email or using faxes. Moving on, we have start my own business. Then we can also look at business owner and entrepreneur. So, an entrepreneur means you make your own work. And another way to say that is I start my own business or I am a business owner. So let's look at the different ones. You can say 10 years ago, I started my own business. I didn't like working for a boss and now I am self-employed. I am a business owner, which means the business belongs to you. Or you can also say, I own multiple, multiple, let me just write that here, multiple, multiple means many. So you can also use it like this. I am a multiple business owner, which means you own many different kinds of businesses. And an entrepreneur, just to reiterate, means that you create work for yourself. Maybe you can have your own company or maybe you can just hustle on the street and buy it from one place and telecommute and sell it by yourself on the internet without having an official company. Right. Moving on, we have the word startup. Startup means that you just started your own business. So, or maybe you can also say you are in the process of starting your own business. So, if somebody asks you, do you have your own job? You can say, currently I am unemployed, but I have a startup and we are just looking for funds or investments and then hopefully one day I will be a business owner. Now when we have startup or use the vocabulary, the vocabulary for business owner, we can use these words, venture capital and overheads. Now venture capital means that you are getting funds for your business from another firm or somebody giving you money to help you start up your company. So you can say, I have a startup at the moment, but we are looking for more venture, venture capital to really get it started so it can be huge. Overhead means the costs that you are paying for your business that is not related to your product. So, Overheads will be things like your rent or your insurance, things like that. So you can say, I currently have a startup, but we have so many overheads that it's really hard to get it going. So what I'm doing now is I am looking, I'm asking other firms and seeing if they can help me with some more venture capital which will help my startup, which can help me to become self-employed, which can help me to become a business owner one day. But until then, I am doing a lot of freelance work and I'm paying my bills by doing that. But I don't want to be a freelancer my whole life. I want to be a business owner one day. Moving on. Sometimes in your exam, people will ask you, does your company pay you well or provide good benefits? Here are some examples we can use to fully express ourselves when faced with this question. First, work benefits. You can say when somebody asks you the question, well, my company pays me a good salary and what I like about my company is that there are some 
fringe benefits. Fringe benefits means there are some extra things that comes with your contract. So fringe, let's just say extras, and usually it will be in your contract. So health insurance is one kind of fringe benefit, especially in a place like America, whose health insurance is maybe not as progressive as some other places, then having health insurance or even dental insurance for your teeth, I'll write here dental insurance, that can be a good fringe benefit that could make people want to work at your company even if the salary is not that good. A company car is another example. If you don't have a car, but your job requires you to drive a lot, then maybe your company can give you the fringe benefit of a company car, which is owned by the company, but that you can use in your off time as well. So that is a good fringe benefit. Moving on, perks. Perks is a nice word. That usually means an extra thing or a little special thing. We can use perks for other examples as well, but usually we keep it for jobs. For example, well, I have a great job. I love my job. My job has so many little perks. Some of my perks include, I have a lot of time off at work, so I can do a lot of chores on the internet in between my work. Maternity leave. Now, maternity leave is an interesting word, and that means when a woman, or in some countries like Europe, even men will get maternity leave, it means that when you are going to have a baby, you being the woman or the husband, if you are going to have a baby, you get time off to take care of your baby, to deliver the baby, or stay at home with the baby. So you can say, my job has a lot of perks. I got three months maternity leave. So I had time to deliver the baby and to rest up and get my strength back. Holiday entitlement is also a very nice perk that some good companies will offer you. And you can say, my company is so great. We have a lot of perks. We even have holiday entitlement. I got four weeks paid holiday at my last job. So that's a very nice perk. Maybe you don't fully understand what does entitlement mean. Entitled means what you are owed, what you are owed or what you deserve. So most companies are entitled, they're, they're entitled to give you certain days off like public holidays or national holidays like Christmas. So everyone has a minimum holiday entitlement. Entitlement just once again means what you are owed or what you deserve. And usually that is the minimum, which means everyone usually gets the same holiday entitlement. But some jobs might offer you more than the basic holiday entitlement. But the holiday entitlement will be written in your contract. So make sure you understand that. You can say, for example, my job has a lot of perks. We have the minimum holiday entitlement, but my job gives me two weeks of extra holiday time if I want to take it. Moving on, we have the word base salary plus commission. Another word for a commission is, uh, no, actually you can have a commission or you can have a bonus. So just to explain that, the base salary is what the company in the contract says it will pay you. So your base salary is your normal or your average salary. Some jobs will offer you a base salary plus a commission. Now, what is a commission? A commission is if you are a salesperson. Let me just write here, 
sales. If you are a salesperson and you get a big sale because of you, only you and no one else help with the sale, let's say for example a car or a ring, you can get the commission which means that a, a portion or a percentage of the money your company got from selling that item will go to you because you are the reason it got sold. So you can say, I have a good base salary but I make a lot of extra money by commission because I'm such a good worker. <laughs> also we can have a bonus. A bonus just means extra pay and usually a bonus can be given for different reasons or factors. Some jobs will give you let's say an uh, attendance bonus. Let me just write here attendance bonus which means if you don't miss work or you're always on time they will give you extra money just to say thank you or if you did a really good job you can also get a bonus or some very nice generous companies might even give you a Christmas bonus or a birthday bonus. So a bonus just means the extra money that you made as opposed to a commission which means you get a part of a sale which is extra money only for you. No one else gets that unless if you worked in a team. Now moving on we have work income and vocabulary words and sentences that can help you to express that further. For example if they say what is your job? You can say I work here and here and here. And maybe they will ask you, what is your income like? The income is the money that you get from your job. So income is like your salary or the money you make. Here are some words that can express that. Pay or remuneration. Pay and remuneration means the same thing essentially you work for people and they give you a pay, a salary, another word we can just write here is salary or a remuneration, both the same things. You can say, well, I'm a plumber but I get remunerated for my services. I get a good pay doing what I do. Another word is a stipend. So a stipend is an interesting word. It usually means things like a minimum wage or an extra fee or extra amount of pay that you get for something. For example, you can have a housing stipend. If you are working in another country, the company can give you a housing stipend which will pay for your accommodation or pay for the rental of your apartment. Also if you are an intern, an intern means you are still learning how to do the job, you don't have the job position yet, you're still training, they will give you a living wage or kind of a minimum wage to give you money while you are learning. A good company will do that. Just to go deeper into a stipend, especially when it refers to an intern or an internship, uh, when you are an intern and studying, learning how to do your specific job at the company, you are not getting an official salary just yet. But if the company is kind and nice, they will give you an intern stipend. The stipend meaning like a small fee or a small amount of money that can cover something like your traveling cost or your food cost while you are in between jobs. So a stipend is something extra. They don't have to give it to you but if they are a good company they can. Like if you are doing your internship you get a stipend or you can get a housing stipend or if you are on your phone a lot and you have to make a lot of phone calls for the company, they could pay for that as well. So you can get an 
airtime stipend. It's just a basic extra fee that you don't have to pay in addition to work for that company. Moving on, we have this. I am reimbursed for a service or for time. So, if you are a freelancer, let me just write that here, freelancer, or if you give a service, a service means usually you don't work in a company, you will go to somebody's house or go to somebody's company to do a service. A service means you work for them or do something for them. Then you can use the word reimbursed. Reimbursed means you are paid. It actually means paid, but also we can use reimburse if you use your own money. You use your own money, which is coming out of your pocket, but somebody is giving you that money back. Then you can say, oh, you know, I had to spend a thousand dollars to do the job, but the company reimbursed me for the money that I had to pay. So you can say I am reimbursed for my service or for your time. For example, let's say you had to work overtime. Let me just write here over time. You worked longer than you were supposed to and the company doesn't pay that in your base salary. You can say <clears throat> we had a big project and last night we did a lot of overtime but my boss is very nice and he reimbursed me for that extra amount of time. So in conclusion for the words associated with work income, if somebody asks you, does your job or your company give you a lot of benefits or do they give you a good income at your work? You can say, well, the pay or the remuneration is pretty good. But what's nice about my job is when I started, I got a stipend. I have a housing stipend, so I don't have to pay rent. And I get reimbursed for any other services that I do. I get reimbursed for any overtime that I do. And I get reimbursed if I have to do anything extra that is not in my contract. Another question that you might get asked during your IELTS exam is, what is your typical day like at work? Here are some useful words that can help you to express yourself with that question. First, I work in the afternoon, or you can say I work the day or the night shift. The shift is the time in which you work. So you can say, oh, I work in a 7-Eleven, I work the day shift and sometimes on a weekend I will do the night shift. Shift just means the time. Moving on, be responsible for or in charge of. So if you have a certain task that you do at your job, you can use this sentence. You can say, at my job, I am responsible for overseeing the spending. I am responsible or I am in charge of labor or I am in charge of communication. That means that there is one focus at your job that is your specific responsibility or duty which you have to focus on. You can use this sentence. My job involves blah blah blah. For example, my job involves cleaning the store or my job involves talking to the customers or talking to the international departments. Moving on, be on my feet for many hours. So a lot of jobs you will just sit down, but if you have to walk a lot or move a lot or go from one place to another place, you are on your feet. So you can say, at my job, I'm on my feet for many hours. I have to run over there. I have to check at that department. I'm on my feet for a lot. Another one we can say is do routine correspondence. 
Now the word correspondence means you have to talk to other people in the company either from another department or in another country or with your co-workers. So correspondence means you have to check on other people and you have to make sure that everyone understands each other and everyone is working together in a good way. So you can say when somebody asks you what is your typical day like at work you can say I do a lot of routine correspondence with the other departments and with the other companies in other cities or you can say at my job I'm on my feet for many hours I have to run from one place to another place my job involves taking care of customer service so whenever someone complains I have to be involved with that because I am responsible for the quality of our products. So if there's any problem, I have to take responsibility for that. Now, moving on, we will be looking at the question, do you like your job? <laughs> now, there are two ways to answer this question. You can either say you don't like the job or you don't make a lot of money, or you can say you make a lot of money or you love your job. Here are some examples that we can look at to fully express and to go into detail on your feelings of the subject. Let's take a look. Make ends meet. Ends in this case is your bills or your expenses. So you can say, I don't make a lot of money. I barely make ends meet. Barely means hardly or almost, almost, almost. So I can't make ends meet means you cannot pay your bills. You cannot do the basic money that you have to pay for things. Moving on, live paycheck to paycheck. That means that you cannot save any money. Every time you get the paycheck, that is all the money that you have for the month. And that means that you are using almost all of your money every month. So if you are living paycheck to paycheck, that's not a good thing. Moving on, make the bare minimum. Minimum means the least or the littlest that you can make. So usually it is talking about minimum wage. So that means the lowest that a company is allowed to pay you. So you can say, I don't like my job. You know, I'm starting at the bottom and I just make the bare minimum. I can't even make my ends meet. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. So that's not very good. Moving on, barely earn a living wage. The wage, of course, is your salary. And a living wage means a salary that can give you a good life, that you don't have to worry about money or saving money or paying bills. So you can say, I don't like my job. I barely earn a living wage. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I cannot keep doing this. Moving on. The pay is not very high. Of course, we know what that means. Your salary is not high. It's pretty low. And you can also say, I don't like my job. I'm stuck behind a desk all day. That means you're just sitting at the table, sitting at the computer, you want to move, you want to do things, you cannot because you're stuck behind a desk and that is making it not a fun working experience for you. Moving on, these are some more words that you can use to express that you don't like your job. The first is rat race. Now just think of a lot of rats like coming together, they're all pressed together, there's no space. The rat race means you are just a little rat running with all the other rats, which means that it's a big group. You're rushing, you're rushing, but you're not making a lot of money and you're not like the boss who is on top and is comfortable. It means you're racing and you're uncomfortable and you're just living paycheck to paycheck. Moving on, exhausting. Exhausting means very, very tiring. So very tiring. So you can say, I don't like my job. 
It's so exhausting. At the end of the day, I can't even move. I just lie on my bed and fall asleep. It's so exhausting. Super, super tiring. Moving on, thankless. Less, of course, means no. So thankless means no one is saying thank you for all the hard work you are doing. You can say, I don't like my job. It's so exhausting, I work so hard, and it's a thankless job. My boss never says thank you, the customer never says thank you, I don't like working there anymore. I want to be thanked for what I do. Moving on, mind-numbing job. Numb means it's cold, you cannot feel anything. Numb means can't feel. So when we use this word, mind numbing, it means your brain becomes so overworked that you cannot feel happy or sad. It just feels like a robot or a machine. So you can say all day at my job, I'm just writing emails and it's so mind numbingly boring. It's a mind numbing job. I do not feel stimulated, it's not creative, I hate my job. Moving on, the salary does not commensurate with my... Commensurate, if you don't know what commensurate means, it basically means makes up for. So, my salary does not commensurate with my effort. Let's use the word effort or my hard work. What that means is you are doing an extra service or working extra hard and you are not getting paid for that. For example, you can say, I don't like my job. I work overtime and it's very exhausting and I still just get the bare minimum salary. My salary does not commensurate with my effort or with my overtime. So, I don't really like my job. Another one last word we can use to describe a job we don't like is a dead end job. Now, what is a dead end job? A dead end, just think about a road. The road stops, it doesn't go anywhere. So, if you say you have a dead end job, that means you are stuck. You cannot go up, you cannot make more money, you're just there doing the same thing over and over and there's no way up or down. So, you can say, I hate my job, it's a dead end job, the work is mind numbing, I do not get commensurated with all of my efforts, I'm going to quit my job very soon. Now, on a more positive note, maybe you like your job. Maybe you love your job. So, if somebody asks you in the exam, do you like your job? Let's look at the good things we can say. First we have, I have a high paying job, which is pretty simple. It means that you get a lot of money for your efforts and for the service that you do. We can also make, or if you want to be fancy, you can say, I pull in six figures. Figures, in this case, means a zero for your salary. So, if you have six figures, that is six zeros, and that, of course, is one million. So, if you are a CEO or you have a high-paying job, you can say, well, I am a business owner and I pull in six figures every year, or if you're very lucky, every month. Going on, make a killing. Make a killing does not mean a real killing. Relax. Make a killing means that you make a lot of money or you make a lot of profit. That means that your job or your business is doing very well or you are making a lot of commissions. So, make a killing just means like a success, like your job is going very well, you're getting a lot of money. Moving on, 
pay is very high. That's the same as a high paying job. And on some notes, you can say get a lot of job satisfaction. So maybe your pay is not very high, but you love your job or you feel what you're doing is a good thing. For example, if you are a teacher, then you can say my salary isn't that high, but I get a lot of job satisfaction teaching children. For me, it is very rewarding. Rewarding means you feel what you're doing is good for your heart or for your soul and you feel happy about your job. So just in conclusion about that, if you make a lot of money, you can say, well, I love my job. It's a high paying job. I make a killing. In fact, I made six figures last year. And not only that, it's a very rewarding job. I'm helping the environment. I'm helping people. And when I see people thankful for my service at the end of the day, it's very rewarding. I get a lot of job satisfaction from it. Now, moving on, we will be looking at vocabulary and sentences pertaining to losing or quitting your job. Maybe you feel that the time at the job is over, or maybe you did a really bad job and now they're going to let you go. Let's take a look at some examples of what you can say. If somebody asks you, how did you lose your job? If somebody asks you that, you can say, well, I was fired. Fired means that they said you cannot work here any go anymore. So I was fired. Usually fired means that you did a really bad job and they were very quick to say, go away. Let go usually means that they don't need you anymore. Or maybe there's a new employee that's better or maybe a machine that can do your job. And if that is the case, if there is a new, better, younger employee or a machine or a robot, you can say, I was made redundant. Redundant means useless or meaningless. So that means that they don't need you anymore. The robot can work faster than you. So you can say, well, I used to do this job, but when they got that new robot, I was made redundant and they had to let me go. Also, you can say this is pertaining to being fired. There are more interesting ways you can say that. Get the ax, sacked, given the pink slip. That means that the company does not want you anymore. So you can say, well, I was given the ax. I was fired. You can also say the boss sacked me last night after I made a huge mistake with the finances. The pink slip, of course, means the slip that is given when your contract is canceled. So you can say after five years, I was given the pink slip just like that all because that new machine has made me redundant. Very sad. If you are let go, they can give you severance pay. Severance pay means if you had a contract and your contract said you had to make a certain amount of money, you will be given severance pay. Severance pay means that they are giving you a little bit of extra money so you can be okay for a month or two after you are let go. Or if you had an important job or you worked at your job for many years, they will reward you by giving you a severance pay. So a severance pay is like a letting go pay. Moving on, maybe you were not fired. Maybe you didn't want to work at your company anymore. So if somebody asks you, why did you stop working at that company? You can say, well, I quit my job. There are many ways we can say that. You can say, if you are too old, 
if you are the owner of a company, you can say, well, I resigned. I didn't want to do the work anymore. I officially resigned. Or if you're too old, you can say at my company, if you're 64 years old, you have to stop working. So I had to step down and give the position to somebody else. Hand in my resignation. So you can see that is the noun for the word resign. Resign, of course, is the verb. So when you resign, you must write on a piece of paper and that piece of paper is called the resignation or a resignation form. So you can say, I am going to quit my job in two weeks. So I have to fill in a resignation form to let them know in advance. And here is an interesting word, a golden parachute. Now think about that word. If there is an airplane and it's going to crash, you jump out with a parachute. A parachute, of course, looks like this. So a parachute means it saves you. For example, with the banks and the owners and CFOs of the banks, after the huge economic downturn, when everyone lost their money, a lot of the high up bosses in the banks were given a golden parachute. That means that the company saved them when they had to lose their job. So a golden parachute means maybe when you quit or resign, they have to give you a big bonus or they give you a lot of stocks or they give you a big payout. So one good example of that is Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, when he became the CEO of Apple, he stopped having a salary and instead the company gave him the golden parachute of a lot of stocks in Apple. So just remember that when you resign or when you want to quit your job, you can say, you know what? I wasn't liking the job anymore. So I handed in my resignation. I resigned because it was time for me to step down, but I did such a good job and the company really appreciated my efforts. I was given a nice golden parachute. I was given a great severance pay. And also I got a lot of stocks to say thank you for my contribution. And that is the end of our lesson for jobs. So if you're going to be doing your IELTS test and you need some extra revision on how to express yourself when you're answering questions pertaining to what is your job? What kind of job do you do? Do you like your job? You can take a look at this video, review it over and over until you get comfortable expressing yourself and answering these questions. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this, you can always go to bestmytest.com and see a lot more videos that can help you. I'm teacher Neil, and I just want to say thank you so much and have a good day.